think there was something else, but maybe not. Okay, anyway, so you get the idea that um, of this can be an incredibly extensive and useful tool um, that really shows very clear connections in ways that sometimes essays and, and things don't because um, that's which is the advantage of, um, of a visual organizer or graphic organizer like this um, and we can uh, you know and again if you have uh, information about courses or classes on a website students can access those from home they can check assignments. You can put assignments on there, which, you know, for somebody who's disorganized, um, which is a lot of kids, and not necessarily all of them have IEPs or are in special schools or anything, they're just disorganized, cuts down on the lost papers and lost backpacks and so on. Um, graphical representations here. You can see here you see um, this is a cause and effect uh, <clears throat> map here. Here we have causes leading to the industrial revolutions and then the effects of the, rev the industrial revolution. That's done you know, by a middle school student, possibly even a fifth grader, but you know, so. Uh, and there again, Connections between concepts are very clear. Okay, there we go. Now, the trouble with print, actually, print is the cause of print, print disabilities are, you know, represent, I think, mean, almost 80 some percent of students who um, request accommodations uh, in disabilities offices and so on related to print and there's a variety of reasons you know areas why print is an issue some of it is because of decoding not being able to decode some of it is attentional some of it is based on fluency there are a lot of reasons why students have trouble reading print so if we really want to you know, expand the accessibility of what we're teaching, we want to look at other ways to represent uh, ideas besides print. So here's a, a kind of an interesting, um, uh, this, here we have actually some text. This is from H.G. Wells's uh, <clears throat> book, The War of the Worlds, uh, which, you know, is, is uh, old text and so on and so forth. Actually, um, we had an eye tracking uh, lab, a, a, a use, called a usability lab, where we did actually usability studies where we actually had students um, as subjects read stuff and then the eye tracker would track where their eyes go. So you could sort of see, um, in, as opposed to an MRI which shows neural networks and how much they light up this shows how long how much they had to focus how where their eyes went to focus and so on so an, a, a, a non dyslexic average reader um, has a track something like this where the blue dots represent the length of time that eyes rested on that word so you see, you know, we have a track from this point to this. Pretty much goes along, you know, to the end, back here, and so on. You know, there's a little variation in here, but essentially this is a pretty, pretty average kind of, of uh, approach to reading. <clears throat> now, see what happens when a dyslexic reader reads the same thing. This is without benefit of any help. Um, and what do you notice? Oh, they stop a lot more. They stop a lot more. Look at the size of those longer. dots. And where are the dots placed? 
boom, boom, boom. What's the student doing? They're trying, they're trying to decode. Decode. They're, they're basically looking at every word, even every syllable. Exhausting. And, and, and when you read like this, your retention just goes out the window. There's also, look, you know, the red lines. This one, this person went back and forth and so on and then on and so on and then, you know, here more and so on. And you look at this and, you know, I show this to people and say, how would you like to read for an hour reading like that? You know, it's awful. No, truly miserable. miserable. Yes. It, it doesn't, isn't the jumping around actually like getting clues of what they're talking about when you jump around the words like that? And the first one or the other one isn't. They're just doing directly. Right. They're not it reading it all ahead. So getting right. no clues to where it's going. Yeah, there's that. And also, um, because they don't necessarily get the words the first time, they keep going back just to be able to decode the words. You know? Um, so by the time they get done with the passage, they barely, you know, they've been able to read the words, but you yeah. can't comprehend. I mean, there's just not enough working memory in anybody right. who can <laughs> comprehend after having to labor over words. Well, there are plenty, plenty, plenty of students with dyslexia who are extremely bright, who have every right in the world to read, you know, the War of the Worlds, but they can't do it unless they have they can't do it effectively. They don't have access to it unless they have, uh, you know, digital text that will read to them. And what is wrong with that? You know, our uh, job has to do with uh, teaching students um, the cognitive aspects of subjects and so on. And if a student can't decode, it's not that student's fault. Um, here's another kind of fun thing that's interesting. Okay, here is um, here is a story called. <clears throat> well, you can read it. So read the following passage as accurately as possible. Be prepared to answer vocabulary comprehension questions about the words you've read. So just take a look at that passage briefly. How is that for you? It's just words. I can't count. Yeah, it's words. It's hard. Anybody have a clue what this is about? Yep, very good. Now, the thing is, okay, so here's this. It doesn't make any sense at all. And so, you know, and this is the way, uh, who knows, you know, this is the way uh, some students might perceive these words. Now listen, now listen to it while you read along with it and see what you think then. So the wicked wolf took a shortcut, and when he reached the cottage of her grandmother, peeked in her window and saw that the poor old woman was lying in her bed. In a flash, this abominable wolf leaped in her bed, pounced on the poor old woman, and gobbled her up. Then this wretched animal put on her grandmother's nightcap and nightgown, and he curled up in her bed. In a little while, Little Red Riding Hood arrived at her cottage, and rang her doorbell. Okay. Amazing, isn't it? Amazing. You could almost learn to decode that. And, and in fact, there's, there's, there are some little studies and some evidence that using a uh, text reader like this is very helpful for developing reading skills and, and fluency, it, 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 as well as you know vocabulary and background knowledge and so on. So, um, so even though a student may not be able to decode all the words to be able to listen to it and, and so on. Suddenly it, it, it develops a little more meaning and, um, you know, and they can work with that. So, and when they're real words, it's even better. <laughs> anyway. Uh, okay. 
Here's another thing that gets me about print is that, um, you know, you look at this, uh, what, are, what are the problems here? The changing fonts. The fonts. <clears throat> How easy is it to read some of these fonts? It's difficult. Yeah, I mean, this is why um, people who study accessibility and usability, particularly on the web, get